Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 16. In this tutorial we're going to bring in some more sound effects for our character stepping. So yes we've already done that but they're echoey and it's relative to this scene and we won't actually step when we move. I will also probably look at a little bit of UI as well for this scene in particular. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this massive series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So at the moment, as we know, when our character runs, he just kind of runs and silently steps, which, yep, that's all good and well, but well, where's the footstep sound? So we're going to bring them in. So I'm going to go into my audio folder and go into effects and we have left step right step however if you remember these were the ones we used in our other scene but that was relative to that scene because they kind of echoed so we're going to discount those for now the two audio files i'm going to use these ones are actually from the unity standard asset so i won't be sharing these on the website but you can get these if you go to the asset store and get the standard assets for unity and essentially all they are in the first person controller you'll be able to find footstep sounds as I said in the asset store just search for the standard assets so these two are the ones I'm going to use now if you remember me saying um, I think I said it a couple of times in this series if we go to our character script and go to our character control this is where we're now going to start modifying this to make it a little bit more well not so simple so we're going to deal with this most of the tutorial because there's things we need to add modify change and just to get it going a bit more uh, it won't be the last time we edit this of course we're still going to do plenty more on this character controller so we need to add in a couple of variables we're going to need a way of randomizing what step we're doing so we're going to need something for that we're going to need those two steps and we're also going to need a, a bool to say are we playing a stepping sound or not so we'll start with that randomized number and we can go public int and we'll just call it step num and i'll explain a little bit more about randomization a little later on in this tutorial next one is going to be that bool so public bool and we'll call it is stepping because we have one called is running so these two are going to be relative to each other because we need to check if we're running and or stepping so we'll have is stepping and by default we will make that equal to false semicolon the next two variables are those two audio files that i've just brought in so public audio source and we'll call it foot step one semicolon and then obviously to keep everything aligned we'll call it foot step two so audio source foot step two semicolon now the majority of this is going to be done in a coroutine and we've dealt with coroutines before so we know how they work but we don't want to be trying to call a coroutine every single frame so what we need to make sure we're doing after is running we've set it to true we need to do another if statement to check if uh, we are actually stepping or rather playing a stepping sound so we need to put if is stepping is equal double equal remember to false which it will be initially then open curly bracket and then we can run our coroutine so rather than have the coroutine running every time and then having an if statement in that coroutine we can have that if statement in our update so let's have start co routine and we can call this anything we want i'm going to call it run sound for now run sound open close bracket close bracket again semicolon and remember this will come up red because we've not actually written that coroutine yet let's write it now so let's go below our void update and let's have i enumerator and we'll call it run sound open close bracket open curly bracket so in here we need to have an if statement and this if statement needs to check if we are running and if we are not playing a step sound so just to make sure that we never have a bug or glitch in here i want to combine those two if statements rather than have them um to rather 
we'll have them together basically just because it makes it easier rather than nest it because if having nesting you have another riff underneath that so it's probably much easier to nest um not to nest it i should say so if an open bracket is running equals true so checking if we are running then we need the double ampersand because that means and the next statement is whatever so is stepping equals false close bracket open curly bracket so this statement right here is saying if running is true and stepping is false then we do the following actions so if we get this far we need to then set is stepping to true so we are running and stepping at this point so now we need to generate a number randomized to play whichever sound we want so we can go if and open bracket um sorry I'm not sure why I said that. That's not the place we need. We need it after we've actually made the random number, don't we? So step num equals random dot range. Now random dot range is a funny little thing because obviously it does randomize the number that you place within it, but you have to just keep in mind that the maximum number that you have within this can sometimes not well always not generate it's just one of those little quirks of unity maybe you could class it as a bit of a bug but we need to do one comma three close bracket semicolon so although our minimum is one and our maximum is three three will never generate that means that we'll either generate one or two so that means if and in brackets step num equals one open curly bracket it means that we have to play foot step one dot play open close bracket semicolon and obviously if it isn't one it'll be two but we can just do that in an else statement so else open curly bracket and it'll be foot step two dot play so We've got this all going. You'll notice this is still underlined red. Don't worry, it will be at this point because we haven't actually uh, waited because we're gonna have to wait for a certain amount of time before we can repeat this process. So after we've done this if statement, if we click this, op this uh, open curly bracket, it will show you where it ends down here. So beneath this one, we then need to put yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets i'm going to do um in fact i know it is 0 0.3 f close bracket semicolon depending on what sound you're playing here this is where you'll need to wait for your uh, feet to kind of catch up so realistically if you've got a long footstep sound short footstep sounds you just have to be careful here but for the character we're using this is ideal. This will play perfectly on every single step he takes. So after we've waited for that, what we can do then is return is stepping back to true, uh, back to false. Sorry, because we've set it true here. So we set it back to false so we can repeat the process all over again. So is stepping equals false, semicolon, and save that script. So already you can see this character control script has almost doubled in size already and this won't be the last that we deal with it. Let's head back into Unity and give the um, give a moment for the script to compile. And it has compiled, perfect, no errors. So what we need to do now is go to our controller character right here and on him all we need to do is add in some empty game objects because these game objects are what will be, uh, or rather what the audio source will be attached to. So all we need to do, and we've done it before, we know what to do. So empty game object, and let's uh, call this sound, and hold control, press D to duplicate, and we'll call this FX, and then just drag and drop, onto sound and then in effects duplicate once again and we'll call this foot step 
one. Drag and drop that on into effect. So you can see the whole child and parent flowing nicely. So that means that we then just have to attach those sound effects right here onto each. Drag and drop onto there. And yeah, you can see what we're doing here. It's not too hard to understand what is going on because essentially it is just a case of duplicating. <laughs> Simple as. Uh, attach that onto there. Rename to footstep two. And I'm going to select both, hold control, select both there. Make sure we untick play on awake. So that means that it doesn't play as soon as it starts, or rather it, it probably will because of the way we've got the script, but don't worry about that for now. Um, we just need to go onto the contract killer and attach those game objects down here. So footstep one onto there, footstep two onto there. I'm going to save my scene and press play and try it out. So you can see there, there we go. So you can hear the randomization of those footsteps playing. You can use as many footstep sounds as you want to really, and theoretically you could use an array, but don't worry about trying to create an array at this point. It's up to you. So you could use four, you could use five, you could just use two like I've done, but the same process would apply. So uh, last thing we want to do here is we're going to prepare ourselves now for a bit more of our story because we need to develop this story a little bit more before we can carry on. We need direction. A lot of people <laughs> have been saying, why did Lorenzo kill himself? Lorenzo didn't kill himself. Why would Lorenzo kill himself? And if he did, why would he be here? So I just want to clarify what happened in that intro scene. What's happened is Lorenzo has been set up. Somebody has shot him outside of the camera's view. So he's had um, George in the chair, pointing a gun at him, and someone has shot Lorenzo, some person off camera. Obviously, that's something that we're going to develop in the story. He hasn't died. He was just injured. And this whole era of what we're doing here now takes place two years later. So let's build on that story. So game object, UI, text. This text is going to be what says two years later at the bottom of our screen. So two years later. And all I'm really doing at this point is just getting things in place ready to build our story. So let's take this in the anchoring position, bring it down to the bottom, uh, zero out. Let's double click on the text. Two years later, let's bring it to there and I'm going to increase the font size to let's say 30 use my rec tool to expand to there two years later and obviously when we press play it's going to be there but the idea is that black screen is going to be there and for just a couple of seconds while we save two years later and yeah that's pretty much it so this is ready for us in the next tutorial and we're going to leave this one here for now. What I would recommend is you work with your footstep sounds, you get everything working because this is the whole environment that we're building together now and it's coming along quite nicely. So next tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to basically um, link the two scenes together. So we'll go from our intro scene to this scene. Uh, we'll work a bit more with our intro here so we'll have what's called a scene starting script. So that scene starter script will prevent us from actually moving around until this little intro has played. But it's something we'll also build upon. So yeah, hopefully. I'd love to see how you guys are doing in this now. I'd love to see what your city looks like, what you're doing. Uh, so if you've got any videos on your channel of what you've built in your GTA series so far, please let me know. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.